Welcome everybody back to the Game of Thrones world. Our studies into the dead, deep sleeping ones are continuing this episode. But before we go on, I've got a couple of things to say. First and foremost, I am going to work my hardest to try and get you content over the Christmas period. I'm going to be for away for about a week. So I'm having to pre-record about a week's worth of episodes, but I am going to really try and crack it out and get it done before I leave. But I will apologize in advance if there are a couple of days without any content. It's, it's a lot stacked up. I don't really like recording any content in advance because I like to get your feedback. I like to know what everybody thinks. If you've got any tips or any advice, then I like to be able to act on that accordingly. But unfortunately for the next week or so, obviously because of Christmas, you know, it's kind of a fair excuse, I think. Um, I'm not going to be able to do that, but I'm going to try and keep the content still as entertaining and to the quality that you all would expect. So apologies for that. But I hope you continue to enjoy the series over the Christmas break. Meanwhile, our boy, Drods Boff. Uh, last episode, we obviously started down the scholarship focus where he started his descent into madness. He's learned some things. He bought a book regarding this strange black stone that, that Ashai has actually built out of as well. The High Tower in Old Town, the Sea Stone Chair, supposedly um, built by these, by these half-human, half-sea um, people. Now we're continuing down this path. It's mighty badly for us. I hope we can become a half fish person, though. That'd be kind of cool. That would be a plot twist, eh? If we become a sea, uh, a, a sea man, I was going to call him then, but that's not right. <laughs> we'll become a sea man. Um, we'll become a mermaid or a, mer, a, mer, a, a merman. Yeah, merman would make more sense, eh? We're going to become a merman. At least I hope so. The studies you have conducted in your observatory have convinced you that there are many things strange beyond the known cosmos. There are a few sources and no one shared knowledge with you. However, you've heard of a strange old maestro at the Citadel. So the Citadel... Um, is where, if you watch the show, Samuel Tali, Hightower, it's in the Reach, it's actually specifically right there. Um, where is it, the Citadel? Starry Se Citadel, there it is. It's on literally the other side of the planet. So, I will go and see him, a long journey, losing another 10 gold. We are a merchant, we are, we are part of the merchant public, we are a patrician, a shadow counsellor, underneath, uh, the city of Ashai. Unfortunately, um, we're not really doing too well with the whole, uh, Merchant Republic patrician aspect of things. So, the plan for this episode, I did discuss it briefly last episode, but for those who missed that, within the Alchemist Guild, when you are knowledgeable enough, you can apply your knowledge to creating fake valuables. So, fool's gold, fake jewellery, fake gemstones, which you can keep for yourself, which, if you manage to fool everyone, give you prestige, can give you, um, obviously, vassal opinion, because they're treated as just regular jewellery, that's the point, if you succeed. Or, you can sell them on for a really, really nice profit. So, this will give us permanent access to that system, with a sort of separate currency, obviously, in the forms of the, the Alchemist Guild uh, esoteric knowledge points. It's just another way of making money that I thought that the sooner we get into it, the better. Then we can flip back to the business focus, hopefully debase them into a couple of time. Our ultimate goal, for the time being, colonizing and setting up camp in the cursed city of Stigai to see what treasures lie there, to see if we can turn it into our personal capital. That's going to be so cool, I think. Because this city in lore is, like, extremely cursed. It's, it's, you get the death penalty if you try and go there. People are forbidden from even going near it. Whereas we're going to try and do the, the, the unthinkable and actually set up our home there. So that, that would be kind of cool, I think. So there's the ruined, there's ruined city of Stigai there, the castle. Uh, it counts as a large Shadow Man castle, which is one of the highest levels of castle. So the smallest castles, level one, obviously the biggest castles, so things like King's Landing, Storm's End, will be that huge fortress at level six. This one's level five, so obviously that's really good to grab that. The city is only a small city, but that is five out of six. And then we've got, um, the temple is not upgraded at all, but apparently it's also considered a holy site, which is pretty interesting. Hey, that's really useful. Now, we aren't a shadowbender, we're obviously an old one, so that's not too relevant for us, but it would be nice to just grab that sort of relevant, lore-friendly, and lore-heavy site. Now, unfortunately, the colonization in this mod is very, very expensive. It's very, very well done. The events are really, really cool. You have to send people to oversee construction, you have to send provisions and aid and make good decisions. But it is very expensive, so it could be a difficult event chain that I'm, I'm kind of expecting to fail the first time around. It might take us a couple of attempts to actually breach the wards of the city of Stigai, but it's going to be very, very cool if you manage to succeed it. Right. Let's see how our scholarship tree fares out. And here we go. Now, we are trying to get the Lunatic event because by becoming a Lunatic, you can join the Alchemist Guild or the Cult of Starry Wisdom. Um, this one's the magic-based one. And as we are in the city of Asrai, and again, talks about this Blackstone, this mysterious Blackstone... Um, it, it, it is sort of a really suitable guild for us, but there is also obviously the Alchemist Guild, learn how to build Wildfire, and obviously the Fate Valuables, which would be more relevant at this point in the campaign. You need either, you know, Lunatic, Erudite, Fire Obsessed, Scholar, Mystic. All of those can come out of this event, right? You can get Mystic, Scholar, um, Fire Obsessed, I believe you can also get if you're a Lunatic. So all of those can come out of the Scholarship event. Similarly, the Cult Starry Wisdom, you need to have Lunatic, um, even Cynical, which is a weird one. I assume you can get, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure you get Cynical out of the Scholarship event. The Necronomicon. 
Seems appropriate for a guy researching the old fallen gods. You arrive at the abode of a strange old master, Valen. After some persuasion, he invites you in. You speak at length, and he tells you about the Archmaster Toth Tothma, who knew many things about the strange spheres beyond, and talking beings that are not human. You find out that Tothma and the Mad wrote a book called the Necronomicon, which he recorded many strange and ungodly truths. Valen says that he is impressed by his sincerity and desire for knowledge, and he can sell you a copy of the book. Too much intense study is said to drive us insane. Lose another... Oh my god, lose another 100 gold. I don't know what I expect at this point. Drotspoth receives the Necronomicon. Now, the other thing to remember in the background, we do have our son, Brapspoth. We are trying to train him up to be a good, thrifty boy. Also a chance of becoming curious. Curious becomes shrewd, which is obviously just a non-congenital version of quick. Very good trait to have there. So this is a safe education to pick for him either way. And obviously, if he does get that good... Um, thrifty education, it's going to benefit him massively because we're in a merchant republic, so that's kind of a win-win. This dude's apparently plotting against me, are you? He's trying to kill my spy master. We could say no to that. Um, my spy master, does she like me? Sort of, but not really. If she died, I don't think I'd lose much sleep over it, I'll be honest with you. Um, has he got any gold? He hasn't got any gold, so there's not much point in imprisoning him. We'll keep that available to us, but I don't think we're going to be doing anything with it. Let's put it that way. Alright, here we go. Working in your observatory, you're often disturbed by strange noises, uncannily large insects, it's like Rimworld, carrying away smaller pieces of equipment and an odd human-like figure spying on you and then disappearing into the night before you can confront them. You really struggle to maintain concentration and get anything done. I must focus, or I can give up, which we lose the event chain studying the stars, but I will focus. Chance getting trait stress, does trust stress is not a big deal. We didn't get it anyway, but it's not a big deal even if we had got it. This will allow us to truly delve into, uh, delve into the weird a little bit. Now, we're not a terrible character. We do have that level 4 education. We have Gregarious, Kind, Zealous. Um, Arbitrary and Slothful are terrible. The only way to get rid of those would be to take the rulership focus, but I think business is still far and beyond better at this stage of the game. I'd normally only focus on get rid of Arbitrary and Slothful if we had Vassals, because both those are a negative Vassal opinion, but we haven't got to worry about that at this point. We're, we're barely even a landed character. We have a mansion and a couple of trade posts, and that's it. I must delve deeper. 30% chance of getting a trait lunatic. We want this. I really... Uh, it's basically a third chance. Cross your fingers, everyone. If we fail, this is your fault. Shit. We're now known as the Accursed, though, which is kind of cool. The passion between Nin and myself was still there, only slumbering beneath our skins. And easily reawakened by a lover's touch, it was hot, fierce, and wonderful lovemaking, such as we used to have. It was exhilarating. 10% chance we die of a heart attack at the age of 42? Absolutely get out of here. A holy man came to court today to talk about the matters of... Un I thought he was talking about the unorthodox faith then, but he has unorthodox views. Right. For the old ones, imprison him. Thank you. He approves of our zealotry. He is a fellow Old One worshipper. We're like this very small sect of Old One worshippers in a shy there. It's kind of a cool little, uh, kind of a cool little society. Now, I did want to make our own secret society, but apparently that's not in the Game of Thrones system. There's no way to, um, secretly convert to different cultures. There's no way to falsely profess faith. So you can't pretend to be worshipping your allegiance to religion, boss, but being this in secret. I guess it's because in the Game of Thrones there isn't much, um, religious and cultural conversion. Besides maybe the, the, the Red Faith, R'hllor, which comes from Essos and sort of spreads around the world. So, I, I can understand why they've taken it out. 25 gold for another 10% fertility. We're 42, she's 30. You know what? Oh, or she loses it. Shit. Okay, fine. Man, I'm not happy about that. Now, remember what I said last episode? They've taken the Shadowlands. Held by the Shadow Men, barbarians driven mad by the Shadow over a Shy. Now, for some reason, the uh, our, our Shadow Chancellor, our Liege, decided to conquer those lands. Now he's in a massive rebellion. Um, because these provinces do have, uh, where is it? Well, we saw it last episode, but basically there is, uh, increased chance of revolt. There we are. Shadow Man remains tribal as long as the capital is Shadow Man culture. It's a backwards culture, making troops less effective. Native homelands are prone to revolt. So, cultural conversion is basically non-existent in this mod via some very, very rare events. Melting pot cultures can occur, so Westerosi, Valerian, things like that. But besides that, this is always going to be a Shadow Man cultured area. So there are downsides to capturing these provinces. You can't just focus and boom up the prosperity in them because that won't help. They will also be at the risk of revolt. There are special events, though, in-game to allow you to unify the Shadow Provinces and become the Shadow King, which is obviously our goal there. Um, the Accursed Shadow King, Drodspoth. What an incredible moniker that is, eh? That's what we need to go for. Great wisdom comes to those who study the world and learn from it. Your studies of the stars and other things have taken you down str very strange paths. The stars are right, game one learning. We've become a very learned character. Unfortunately, we haven't gained that lunatic trait, which is basically all I set out to do, which is a little bit of a shame, eh? Um, how I just get you to end your plot? Because I'm kind of sick of that popping up, because it really doesn't bother me that much. But also, I mean, we can't get anything out of you. Man, this one's also got a revolt going on as well. Oh, no, that's, that's still the same revolt. 
Um, this guy is actually separate. This guy is a shadow man, a tribal shadow man. It's kind of cool that they always remain tribal. That's a nice system. Oh, wow, they actually managed to survive it. Look at that. Ashai still controls it. Obviously, they won't touch Stigai because um, that is super cursed. But that will be mine. We will take that. Do we want to become a Devoted Keeper of Outer Secrets? Now, normally, does that not give you the scholarship? Or does that not give you the traits Scholar or Mystic? Um, so basically, you're telling me we get nothing or we gain weird Scholar giving us stewardship and learning. That seems a bit shitty. Okay, fine. Maybe it's because we already have... I don't know. Maybe it's because we already have the Hunter focus or, or the Hunter hobby. It's a little bit annoying. So there are other ways to become a lunatic. Venturing into the cursed smoking seas of Valyria is one way. However, it's also incredibly dangerous. You can end up getting grayscale. It is a risk I wouldn't undertake lightly. Plus, I don't think... Oh, we have boats. Fuck it. It is a risk I'm undertaking lightly. I want to become insane. And I feel like it's the next part of Drod's journey to head over to Valyria and see what we get. So as long as he's leading the troops heading to the smoking sea, we can potentially get something out of this. Right, let's ignore all the revolts and all the raiders and everything. And head over to Valyria. We had in-command happen to us. Classic. Right. This is going to be interesting, I think. It might be a big mistake. There is a lot of commotion in the docks of the Shire. Apparently, the captain of one of your family's trade galleys rammed his ship into the pier. Lose 40 gold. We are not... We are getting so unlucky with the gold this game, eh? It's like really not going well at all. We'll go back to the business folks for a while. And hopefully, we can debase some mint. Wife is pregnant again. Could get... We might get very, very lucky and end up with a decent son. Lose another 40 gold. Hooray! Fuck you too, game. I feel like it wants Drod's Dwarf to fail. So I think the best way to do it is just sail around the Smoking Seas for a very, very long time. So we'll just sort of do a route back and forth and back and forth. Um, go to this one and then head back up here. Then go to this one. And we'll just go round and round in circles until eventually the event fires. It's not ideal, but it should work. There we go. All right. Um, maybe we just have to sit in the Smoking Sea for a while. Oh, we had a daughter. Oh, that's terrible. It's terrible. We don't want a daughter. We're a patrician merch republic. Get out of here. Um, let's just sit in the smoking seat for a while and see if we get the event firing. I think it's on like a monthly pulse or something. One afternoon, your wife comes to you and begs a private word. She asks you to allow her to take a serving girl as a handmaiden. Uh, lose some prestige, but why not? She's a serving girl, so she shouldn't really be fraternizing with a glorious noble house such as House Spoth. But that's fine. Are we going to get this event or not? Maybe you have to sail through it. No, I'm pretty sure we should get it like this. Maybe that maybe you have to be a landed character or something like that. Because technically we're not a landed character. Um Yeah, I don't think it's working. We'll get let it go until like May, and if we don't get it by then, I'll I'll come home. Um Lang fell into a period of interregnum. So Lang is the island our character originally came from. Um this religion is native to Lang. Fell into an interregnum with the great council of nobles being called in to determine the heir. He has been crowned as the new god emperor of Lang. He's turned his back. On the classic uh, religion of our people. He's taking the gods of Yi T Oh my god, the hiccups already. The gods of Yi T as his, uh, as his religion there. Unbelievable. Just incredibly rude, really. Um, yeah, that's not working. Right, come home. What a waste of time that was. Absolutely nothing out of that at all. And there's a transfer to gaining scurvy, which is even better. <sighs> I'm so annoyed. That was, that was just a complete waste of time. Right, we're back on land now, so we should be okay. The music's kicked in, and it's incredibly loud. So I'm going to turn that down a little bit. No, 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 no. Down. Not completely mute. Right, there we go. Hopefully that's not too bad for you guys now. Right. Okay, in command is no longer affecting us. My wife is going to feed me some fruits and vegetables, and we should be good. Okay. So our daughter... Oh, I didn't rename Ela Spoff. Ela Spoff is already pretty good. Perk Spoff. Do we want to get her a good education? Oh, she's a really good diplomat. I'm going to say no. Because I can't afford it. Oh, it's actually really, really cheap though. 20 gold gives a plus 4 learning. So like I said last episode, learning plays into a child's education. The higher learning, the more chance they've got out a better, better education trait. Honestly, lose 3 gold and she gets a minus 2. That's I'm just going to do that. Get out. Lose a trait scurvy. Right. Now we've got to pray to the gods. Oh, some gold. Thank you. We've got to pray to the gods that we get some gold. Are we on the council? Um, I don't think we are, are we? We want to have 5 children. I might be tempted to cancel that one. Someone siege my trade post? Seriously? My trade post of all people? We haven't got any gold as it is. <laughs> Please. I'm so poor. Business focus. I need some events. Dear Shadow Chancellor Drod the Accursed, I hereby invite you to the Grand Feast in a shy. Absolutely. We'll try and make good friends with our liege. Maybe it's worth saving up some money then. Man, all of my plans have sort of fallen apart. And they no gold. We didn't get the Lunatic traits. So we can't even join the Alchemist Guild. Everything's gone wrong here. Please, become my friend. Shadow Chancellor Irara's feast is over and it's time to give him the long way home. Will there be a feast next year? Nothing. Unbelievable. Now, you know what we should do? 
I think we go out of ways to steal an artifact. So I do have the artifact acquisition submod enabled. You guys know how much I love this mod. For those of you who haven't seen it, those of you new to the channel or new to the series, it's a small submod, very well balanced, that allows you to go out and try and attempt a heist on someone else's artifact. So why don't we take a look through the world, see what we can find here. Let's go uh, rare artifact. My god, my spelling. Right, reset. Rare artifact, see what we've got available, preferably within Diplo range. And sort by rank. So the God Emperor of Yeti has a glass candle. Right. This is interesting. So because magic still exists in this area of the world, in the world in general, because it's before all the dragons have died, we can use a glass candle if we have 12 learning. Glass candles give a massive bonus to intrigue, diplomacy, and learning. This guy is too stupid to use it. You need to be a shadow binder, a warlock, a red priest, or a mystic to be able to use a glass candle. I would really like that. Even if we can't use it immediately, in the future, just having something like this around, something that we can focus on trying to be able to use would be incredibly good. Like, look at the bonuses you get from it. How could I say no to that? We are going to go on a journey to Yeti, break into the Imperial Palace, and try and steal his candle. This isn't going to end well, is it? I feel like we're going to die here, but let's give it a go. Who shall be your accomplice? Um, my Marshal, who has proven himself. You know, last episode, he really fought well against those Shadow Men. Take my Spy Master, or we can take my lover, my wife, um, who might end up dying horribly. Let's take the marshal. I feel like of all the people to bring on us on this journey, the marshal is probably the safest bet. We've got good sneaking skills. You know, we're an elusive shadow. We've got decent, not great, but decent intrigue. We've got a good amount of diplomacy, or at least an average amount of diplomacy. Our other stats are crappy, so hopefully the marshal will balance out our marshal. Let's see what we can do. You've arrived at God Emperor Butri of Yeti's capital. As expected, it's heavily guarded. We can force our way inside. 68% chance of success. We can sneak him through the window, thanks to our high intrigue. Our relatively good intrigue, I should say. 60% chance of success. Or we can convince him to let me in. This depends on diplomacy. Let's force away inside. 68% chance. Oh my god, this is so risky. If we get captured, he could execute us. He could throw us in prison indefinitely until we can ransom ourselves out. He could fight us and we could end up with wounded or maimed and then just die horribly in our bed. Or we can... There's a very, you know, rare chance of us escaping. Force my way inside. Let's, let's actually kick a window in or kick a door in. Oh! Oh, that's me right now. This is actually a picture of me. Failure! The guards quickly start surrounding you. Run away. 18% chance of being in prison. 27% chance of escaping with wounded. 55% chance of escaping. So we've got an 80% chance, 83% chance there of actually escaping. 82% chance of escaping um, at all. Beg for forgiveness. This music is appropriate, eh? Beg for forgiveness. 18% chance we're in prison. 27% chance of escaping and losing 500 prestige. Ugh. Um, Fight my way out. That one also has the same amount of chance of escaping, but that one, if we fail, we're imprisoned. So either way, we're going to be imprisoned. That way, we get wounded. Oh, either way, we get wounded, so it doesn't matter too much. Um, let's run away. That's horrible. <laughs> um, that is horrible. That's the worst that could have happened. Drods Bath. No, please. Am I in the yet? It could. What do you mean it could have been worse? We are now in prison for trying to steal the Yt Emperor's glass candle. Oh my God, we're in the dungeon. Oh, we are. I was going to say, we've got no diplomacy. We must be in the dungeon. This is terrible. This is the worst case scenario. Okay. This is really bad. We basically... Oh my god, my son's indolent. You piece of shit. You're supposed to be good. You got indolent? Let's just hope our son comes out half decent. Because I feel, figured this could be the end of Drot's buff. A man who has achieved nothing. He's achieved absolutely fuck all. Oh god, this is so bad. My, my chief general has also been imprisoned. The man we took with has also got imprisoned. <laughs> of course that would happen. Okay, fair enough. We can demand a trial by combat. As a prisoner and person of high birth, you're entitled to a trial by combat by your captor. Absolutely. Nobody holds Drod Spoth. Trial by combat is an ancient custom which can be used to settle accusations or disputes in single combat, possibly to the death. You have announced to the God Emperor, Boo Try, your intention to invoke your right of a trial by combat. and must now select your companion. Maybe the madness has settled in a little bit too much. He's an indolent idolizer. Oh, fuck me. Oh, it's so bad. It's got four stewardships, though, so it's something. I will prove my innocence before the old ones. Cthulhu himself will bless us in this combat. Shit, this is so bad. Um, we have to find a champion. That's what we have to do. Right, so what we can do, we can offer to fight our trial personally, which... Let's be reasonable here. Uh, we have two Marshall, and we have a personal combat of plus five. Now, bear in mind, this is very similar to the Holy Fury system of personal combat. Plus five is nothing. That's really, really crappy. So, for example, our lead here has 
Uh, minus 5, but plus 40 from Trained Fighter there. Only because he's old and, and a craven does he lose that. So, I'm not really confident that we'd survive. No. What am I saying? We're Drod Spoff. We're chosen by the old gods. We will win. In an outrageous contravention of ancient lore and custom, he has denied you the right by trial for combat. Holy shit. He may have just saved Drod Spoff's life. Unbelievable. We've now made the Emperor look like the bad guy because he's... he's Refused custom. That's incredible. Okay, well done, team. We're getting justice, apparently. I am in court as the accused. Expires on the 19th of September. Right. Okay, let's see what his let's see what his outcome is for our crime. We've worked we're affected with great sickness. That sounds terrible. What the hell is the great sickness? Is that like maybe it's just flu. Maybe it's the bubonic plague. Who knows? Glad they hired luck. Oh, there we go. That that's why you hire a guy called luck. Alright. Another couple of months, and we'll find out whether or not this is the end of Drod Spoff and his crappy, crappy life. He's had a really bad life. We've, we've spent a lot of gold on a lot of things that haven't really done anything for us. We do have, have that copy of the Necronomicon. Learning plus five. Man, this character was terrible. This is the problem with playing randomly generated characters, especially with a small start as well. It can be a really big grind to get to somewhere decent. But you know what? I feel like we just set on our money. We're making a, not a, exactly an alright amount of money, but we are making some money here. Right, April couple more months. Wait. Did he not come up with any outcome for us? He didn't come up with any outcome for us. To be fair, it's only 25 gold to get us out of prison. Do we want to take 50 gold out? No, no, no. I don't want to do that. No. I think I think we can demand another trial by combat. Or we can ask for accommodation more suitable for my rank. Excuse me. I own a house. I want a room in your court, Imperial Emperor. Who I believe has also said no, seeing as we're still in the dungeon. Fuck it, let's demand another trial. I will prove my innocence before the old gods. You will let me leave. Or I will die in the process. Cthulhu will bat me here. Fight my trial personally. He's denied it again. Yeah, no, he's not, he's not going to have a trial by come up with this random 50-year-old dude. No. Lippeth, my friend. The man who repelled the shadow binders from our lands is now dead. Oh my god, am I going to have to get revenge on the god emperor? We should release... New campaign goal. We release the old gods from their labyrinth of Lang and unleash them on UT. As revenge for our friend Lippeth. As a, as vengeance for locking us in prison for so long. Right, Brapsboff needs an education. Haughty, idolizer, indolent. Arguably the worst traits you can ever get as a character in CK2. As, as any any education in CK2. At least his diplomacy education might not come out too crappy, so I'm going to go for that. Okay, let's go for a learning education, but I don't see why we'd do that ever. Learn it. Okay, diplomacy education. Let's spend highly 20 gold to get him the best education possible. That's another four learning. Honestly, you know what? He's not an atrocious character. Six diplomacy, nine learning. He could have ended a lot, lot worse, right? And his learning also, like I said, influences his overall education. So we might get a good air. My daughter is responding well to education. Um, my son is still serving. Oh, my, my maester is still serving the court. If we got a new chief general, we could also get them to help... Um, educate my son in sword fighting. But the issue is we'll have to find literally anyone who can join the court. And I don't think anybody will. Join court? Yes. Oh my god, there's one dude. Kuret Lang Lam. Welcome. Invite to court. Please, for the love of God, teach my son how to sword fight, for Christ's sake. Okay, welcome. I don't think we can appoint him as our chief general, though. Because he obviously... Oh, he, he, we can. Just. The fool has made things worse. My wife has tarnished my already destroyed reputation. Ah. News from Trani of a trial by combat. Hussein Chan... Who is this dude? God Emperor Merce of the Good. So from Lang. News from Lang. Right. Um, he's proven his innocence by forcing his opponent to yield. Well done. Thank you. For it's almost like rubbing it in, isn't it? By the way, here's a trial by combat where they won. You loser. Locked in the dungeon. Thanks, game. I appreciate that one a lot. Right, so let's get this boy training children. There is a chance. Child hates training. 15% chance a year because he's such a shit teacher. But there is a possibility he might end up helping our son with some education. I mean, until we can get some money or until we can get find someone better to join our court, it's the best we've got. We might as well roll the dice, right? What have I got to lose at this point? Oh, he's improved relations with the Shadow Chancellor, though. Thank God for that. Well, that's better than nothing, eh? He's a slave trader and a slave owner. So, in the eastern part of the world, in the Game of Thrones series, that's where most of the slavery takes place. The Dothraki, the Yeet, Ashai, uh, obviously Slaver's Bay here is the, the area most known for slavery. And all of these areas are the free cities, so that's where slavery is out outlawed. And same with uh, same with Westeros. So we have access to these systems that aren't traditionally available to you if you're playing your more sort of standard Game of Thrones style game. At least, 
if, if we've done nothing else this episode, we have almost got out of complete debt. And you know what? That, as far as I'm concerned, is a bonus. All we had to do was be completely locked up. So now it's Purple Empress Pol Zhu. Her father um, died in battle against the forces of Hibub. Thank you, Hibub. You are a great clansman. What is that? Further east. Holy shit. Oh, so these people, the Grey Clansmen, are from the Grey Wastes. So that's somewhere that even the expanded universe doesn't touch on, right? There are like cities of the boneless men, like cannibals, which are almost like vampires, exist in this very, like, very far end. So basically, the further you go away from the more feudal Westeros, the more magical and ridiculous it gets. And that's essentially true with, with these guys. So this is, this is where even the series dare not touch on, even the books dare, dare not touch on. Um, make my request. Hey, can I leave? I've been in here for quite a while now. Nothing? Oh, fair enough. Trial by combat? What do you think? Third time's a charm. I'll prove my innocence before the old ones. Let me out, for the love of God. My daughter, Horps Buff, does not deserve an education. I can't afford it. My God, we're almost out of debt, and then her fucking education came around, and now we're... Man, she's a good intrigue character, though. She got playful and fussy. Those are both pretty good. We're out of debt. She's not responding well to my tuition. We don't care about her. We're actually out of debt. Reputation and That's fine, though. People are going to like us a bit more, because we don't like to have the minus 10 general opinion. We can start building up our money to take the city of Stigai. Let's build up our our funding for our campaign over there then. Man, this has been a crappy episode because we've basically just been in prison the entire time and there's nothing I can do about it. Um, Again, fight my trial personally. No. You weren't supposed to say yes, Purple Empress. Okay, Purple Empress Palsu has, has acceded to my demand. Okay, this will be hard fought. We are going to fight Prefect... Lu Zhuan, who has 35 personal combat. He's a poor fighter, but he is ruthless. He is also an incompetent commander with 9 martial. I think this might be the end of poor Drod Spoff. But at least his son is almost ready to go, right? 14 years old, greedy, slothful, zealous. Could have come out a lot worse. Honestly, he could have ended up a lot worse. This will be hard fought. You and the Prefect Lu Zhuan slowly circle one another, tense and focused. You scan him for any signs of weakness. Any opening as defense that you could possibly exploit. The old ones will guide me. Cthulhu. Prefect Lu Zhang comes at you honorably. You use every dirty trick to try and take advantage. You attempt sly kicks and cunning trips until you see an opportunity to strike. Strike! Holy shit, Cthulhu. I actually can't believe this. Prefect Lu Zhuan tries to fight back, but you force your way through evilly, easily overpowering his pathetic defense. You strike for his heart with all your might. Die. No way did we do that. No way, Drod the Accursed. Now, what's even more impressive is when I set up the game rules, there is an option to change dual randomness. Let's see if we can find it here. Um, what is it? Dual randomness. Dual outcome randomness. So I actually made it lower so that normally there's a lot more randomness associated with things. So characters who are less trained have a higher chance of obviously succeeding. The lower the chance of the randomness, the, the, the stronger the warriors are. Um, at, at winning it, the higher trained warriors at winning it. So, not only did we win this duel in the first place, completely outnumbered, but I've made it harder for us to win things like that, and we still did it. Valamogulis, Cthulhu, my boy, he has saved us. We are released from prison. We've regained our honor. What a fucking character arc. Like Napoleon, we're coming back. Did, did Napoleon come back? Not really. Um, but we've come back from exile, from our imprisonment, and we're home. Drawn spot, no one expected him to return. Our son... Has ended up probably very crappy. Let's be reasonable here. Zealous is good. Greedy, honestly, also pretty good. Slothful, crappy. Haughty, crappy. Could become proud, arbitrary, ruthless, or cruel. My god, if he gets arbitrary as well, he's basically just a carbon copy of us, right? Slothful and arbitrary and zealous? That would not be good. Please don't get that. And hopefully, he'll come out a decent diplomat, if nothing else. Fingers crossed. I mean, he is our... He is a very highly educated man. Scholar, erudite, content, humble, zealous. Please... Don't let my son be crappy. I beg you. All right, let's wait and see here. How long have we got until he is of age? 5th of July. Seven months and we get to see what we're going to play as next. I, I'm almost kind of dreading it in a way because we've really got no control over our characters right now until we be get better characters for ourselves. Holy shit. They took Kuramai, which is part of Stigai. Now, they haven't taken the Cursed City of Stigai. That's still mine. I'm going to get that one, I guarantee you. But holy shit, that's, that's kind of impressive. Oh my god, he became a Grey Eminence. There is hope in the world. He got arbitrary, though. Ah, oh, shit. Brap. Brap's buff, you useless child. Great eminence, though, is obviously incredible. He also ended up with only three learning, despite the fact that he had, what, like, nine learning five seconds ago? That seems a bit strange. 
Obviously, Designated Heir will be the only one we had available. Brap's buff there. I think our only son as well. So if we die now, and if he dies as well, we're in a really bad situation. Holy shit, that was that was kind of good. He's, he's better than I thought. He's better than our current character, but still not too impressed. Here you go. You can have Food Taster. Um, is there anything we can do for him right now? We can force him to train, but only if we're a better swordsman than him, which obviously we're not. Propose a foreign tour. He needs to be 18 and has to not be slothful. Now, if we die and play as him and get rid of slothful in time, we could go on our own foreign tour. That allows you to gain a lot of prestige, a lot of different skills, maybe buff up your stats, gain some traits, even gain a wife or some artifacts. So getting something like that would definitely help out a lot because this character is very mediocre otherwise. Good diplomacy, though. That's going to help out a little bit. Right. The Shadow Men are back. After many, many years of being away, my chief general is dead. We've got ourselves a really crappy chief general, Karanis Langlam, who has 5 martial and 15 personal combat. Let's see what we can do. Wait, did I say teenager? 23? Mmm, citation needed on that one. My chief general shall teach him not to return. Be gone, Shadow Thought. If she breathe, she... Oh, or she a thought as well. The fool's only made things worse. General opinion minus 10. Absolute idiot. Oh, nice. Look at this guy. He, and we gained 30 gold. Oh my god, how much gold do we need to colonize this guy? It's 400. I mean, we're a third of the way there. So, oh my god, this is going to be so cool. If we can grab Stig, I, I genuinely think we're, we're going from a we're going from a current two. Uh, oh, let's be honest, we're a one. We're, we're a one at this point in terms of how good our campaign is going. That will take us up to like a six or a seven. Especially if we can not only get Stig, but turn it into a valuable province. It's a lot of hard work, but it could be possible. Oh my fuck it. Seri He's probably a better marshal than he is a steward. He actually is. That's embarrassing. Oh, that's that's actually got awful. And he's going to be in charge of our republic with two stewardship. You know what? I'm thinking when we play as this guy, we flip over to rulership focus, try and get rid of arbitrary, try and get rid of slothful immediately, and turn him into a decent character. Now that, my friends, will have to come next episode because we have overrun. Because I was so invested in seeing how Brap's buff would end up. And I kind of wish I wasn't in hindsight. Thank you all for watching. I hope you've enjoyed the episode. There's a bit more of a character focused series I'm going for this time around. Let me know if you enjoy it. Please leave a like. Leave a comment. Let me know what you think. I'm going to give a shout out to all of my insane top tier level patrons. For making a series like this possible in the first place. My good friends. Big Dick Timmy. Zachary Harris. Harik. Lucas Holting. Sean Thornton. Haydock. Zadini. Paul. Necrophil and Croesus. I'm a Lizard King. Josh Lindine Tesla. Michael Mullen. Tyler Birch. Jacob Alexander Fenton. Pelvis Presley. Logan Thorne. Conspired C. Orcs Wolf. Average Gamer 49. Escape. Zazzy7011. And Jackson Whitman. For the support and the insanity levels on Patreon, thank you all for making the series possible. Hope you guys are enjoying it. Hope you guys are enjoying it as much as me. Anyway, because that is quite a lot. I'm actually really invested in this series for once. And it's kind of rare for me to still enjoy CK2 to that extent. You know, comes with playing it for several hours every day, I guess. And as well to Nathaniel Lindbergh, Brandon Wintoniak, Euphrates, Facundo Vasquez, Quasar Fox, Jack Allen, Gabriel Vanders, Llewellyn Thomas, Nathan Flores, Yohan DeVries, Duncan 22 and 7, Seth McDougall, Joseph Beard, Jordan Campbell, Harry McGowan, Chris, Surf Thor the Swede, Asero, Nick, Fraser Brennan, Kevin Saunders, Betamus Max, The Insane Pickle, Adam Person, Eagle, Kozak. Round applause in the comments for these people who have enabled this series to be possible in the first place, because God knows YouTube won't. Thank you all for watching, and we will find out what Brap Spoff gets into, probably next episode, where we go to Stig Eye.